Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to Miss Hope's Reading Hour. So glad to be with you on this wonderful Wednesday. I'm glad to be back today. Unfortunately, I had to be away on Monday because, oh, my ear is itching. Um, I had to be away on Monday because of a family medical emergency. But do know that everyone is okay. Thank you so much for many of your concern for um, the medical emergency, but everyone is fine. And I'm very happy to say that, very thankful for that. So I am glad to be back with all of you today on this Hope's Reading Hour. Hopefully you had a great, marvelous Monday. Even though we didn't get to um, be together, but guess what? I told you over the weekend I was going to do some ordering, and I did. And today, our first two books are brand spanking new brand spanking new books okay now if you saw in the teaser for the rest of this month of course because i would have started at the beginning of the month but i hadn't made my order yet okay so um for the rest of this month we will be reading some stories that are about native american culture because this is a native american History Month. So um, I wasn't sure if November was definitely Native American History Month, but if it is not, guess what? We are still recognizing Native Americans this month. And I have quite a few stories for you all for the rest of this month. And as you know, very soon, it will be Thanksgiving. So of course, we have to have a story today about a plump and perky turkey, okay? So that will be one of the stories that we read today. Now, I have made a purchase of quite a bit of books. That will last me a little bit, but you do realize every time we come together, sometimes we are reading two or three picture books. And of course, reading from our chapter book that we would be reading. So please do not stop donating to Miss Hope's Reading Hour. Before I get too far into the reading hour today, do remember, as the ticker says, that this lovely kind of silly music that will go with our first book and the other music you will hear on Miss Hope's Reading Hour, as well as the books that we read here on Miss Hope's Reading Hour, though we enjoy them, though we love them, Though we want to buy them possibly for our own library, Miss Hope does not own the rights to any of the music or the books, but they are here for all of our listening and reading enjoyment. Okay, gotta let you know that. Now, if you would like to continue to donate to Miss Hope's Reading Hour Library, please, feel free to look <laughs> I always have to figure out which way is the right way at the ticker down here and all the information that you need is in the ticker for you to donate to Miss Hope's Reading Hour library via cash app or by email by sending digital um, gift cards or if you send me a request to be able to send me books in the mail, I will take them. I will take those packages. Yes, I will. Okay. So please do donate to this host reading our library. All of the proceeds from the donations that you give are used solely 
completely 100% for the purpose of buying books for the Miss Hope's Reading Hour Library to be read right here on Miss Hope's Reading Hour. Okay, now oh, my nose is itching. I don't know what this thing is. Lately, every time I'm about to start Miss Hope's Reading Hour, the right side of my nose starts itching. I have no idea what that's about, but it's a little itchy. All right. <laughs> so let's get to the books. Our first book that we are reading today is called A Plump and Perky Turkey. I have read through this book. It is funny. Okay. A Plump and Perky Turkey. This book is by Teresa Bateman, illustrated by Jeff Shelley. And this is a Two Lions book, published by Two Lions. A plump and perky, perky, okay? And our next book is actually a Reading Rainbow selection. If any of you know about the TV show Reading Rainbow, when I was growing up, I loved Reading Rainbow. And in this shipment of books, I got several books that were read on Reading Rainbow, okay? It would be amazing for me to beat LeVar Burton. It would, it would be amazing. Anywho, our next book is called Rainbow Crow. Isn't that a beautiful picture? It's beautiful. Rainbow Crow. This story is retold by Nancy Van Lan, illustrated by Beatrice Vidal. And this is a Dragonfly Books book. The Rainbow Crow. And of course, we are almost finished. Almost finished walking with Miss Millie. Okay, so let me see, how much do we have left? I think we have about four chapters of Walking with Miss Millie left. Wait till I show you how much we have left. You're gonna be like, what? That's it. That is it. We're almost done Walking with Miss Millie. And there's so much to find out in these little bit of chapters. So much to find out. All right, my friends. Let us get to our first book, A Plump and Perky Turkey by Teresa Bateman, illustrated by Jeff Shelley. The people in Squawk Valley were downhearted and depressed. Thanksgiving was approaching, but without its special guest. They couldn't find a turkey for the feast they planned to eat. It looked like they'd be making do with bowls of shredded wheat. <laughs> um, that would be really sad. Shredded wheat for Thanksgiving. Just doesn't seem right. A plump and perky turkey is what we need, they all agreed. But finding turkeys nowadays is very hard indeed. The birds have gotten smarter and they all seem quite aware that it's best to disappear when autumn leaves are in the air. A plump and perky turkey, stomachs rumbled at the thought. But how to trick a turkey into jumping in the pot? <laughs> oh boy, now they're going to try and trick the turkey? Look at the turkeys! <laughs> they're in the air balloons, like, we're out of here. Then Ebenezer Beezer had a thought pop in his head. If we can't find a turkey, let's have one find us instead. We could hold an arts and crafts fair, he declared with a wink and grin. A fair with one grand turkey prize that all of us could win. 
That seems pretty sneaky. And since our goal is turkey, that's the theme we'll take to heart. We'll fill our fair with folks and fun and tons of turkey art. We'll make turkeys out of spuds, out of clay and out of rope. We'll make turkeys out of oatmeal, out of paper, out of soap. That's a lot of turkey art. And those ain't no small turkeys either. <laughs> We'll hang a bunch of posters in the forest way down low to invite some turkey candidates to model for our show. Why even turkeys understand, as everybody knows, you can't make turkey art without a turkey there to pose. The people in Squawk Valley held a poster jamboree. They plastered their creations on every single tree. <laughs> now it happened in Squawk Valley lived a turkey known as Pete. He was cocky, he was clever, and he really liked to eat. While he strutted through the forest, plump and perky through the pines, he was startled and intrigued by all those interesting signs. With a proud and jaunty gobble, he gave out a hearty cry, a plump and perky turkey. Well, I'm sure I qualify. <laughs> Little fool of yourself, ain't you there, Pete? <laughs> Pete applied for the position and he strutted plump and proud. He could hardly wait to model for the large and eager crowd. You're hired, shouted Beezer, for the folks had all agreed that Pete the perky turkey was the answer to their need. Oh, they figure we're going to have a good Thanksgiving this year. <laughs> Twas the week before Thanksgiving when Pete posed to do his part and the artsy, craftsy town folk started making turkey art. They're going to play this whole thing through to the end, huh? <laughs> they made turkeys out of spuds, out of clay, and out of rope. They made turkeys out of oatmeal, out of paper, and out of soap. <laughs> Thanksgiving Day, the artwork done, they asked the model down to judge their homemade turkeys and to pick the best in town. Now when the judging's over, Beezer whispered with a smile, we'll tuck that model turkey in the oven for a while. Oh, poor Pete, he doesn't know what he's gotten himself into. Pete judged each piece of artwork as the hungry crowd all cheered. He stopped to take a closer look and then he disappeared. Oh boy. What happened here? There were turkeys made of spuds. There were turkeys made of rope. There were turkeys made of paper. There were turkeys made of soap. The room was full of turkeys in a wall-to-wall -wall collage. 
For a clever bird like Pete, it was the perfect camouflage. Oh, he is a slick one. Let's see if our perky turkey gets away. <laughs> He's over here, old Beezer said. He's here, said Jacob Green. They searched amongst the turkeys, but their bird had fled the scene. A note in turkey scrawl they found half hidden on the lawn. Goodbye, I took my modeling fee. The oatmeal bird was gone. Oh, ho, ho, ho. he got away and took a little smack. Well, they did say that Pete liked to eat. Okay. The people in Squawk Valley were left feeling rather blue. The only turkeys left in town appeared too hard to chew. Oh well, said Beezer brightly as they gathered round to eat. Right now, at least I'm thankful that we still have shredded wheat. Oh man. <laughs> shredded wheat for Thanksgiving. Can't be great. That day, folks learned a lesson that stuck firm with them forever. A plump and perky turkey can be pretty doggone clever. <laughs> Look at them all having a good old time on the beach. The end. <laughs> Pete wasn't the only one that got over on those people trying to gobble up those turkeys. This was a good story. Trick them good. A plump and perky turkey. <laughs> by Teresa Bateman. That was a good story. I like that one. I was like, that's pretty funny. There's another book that I think I want to buy. Even if I get it after Thanksgiving, I think I still want to get that book. It's kind of similar, but I don't know because I've never read it. But you might be seeing it very soon. So that was a really good story. That was funny. They got him, They he got them good. He got them real good. I'm like, oh, no, no. You can, we can have fun at this whole arts and craftsy thing. And I'm going to take my fee. Because remember, you said that I was going to get a prize. So my prize is the oatmeal turkey. Because I quite do like oats. <laughs> that was a good one. All right. So our next book with these beautiful pictures, Rainbow Crow, retold by Nancy Van Lyn, illustrated by Beatrice Vidal, a dragonfly books book. So there's something in the beginning of the book and I want to, I don't know. I may read this at the end of the book. I want to get into the book. Rainbow Crow. All right, so I got to open the book out a little bit. Brand making new books, people, I told you. Long, long ago, before the two-legged walked the earth, the weather was always warm and the animals were very happy. Look at those pictures, people. Aren't they beautiful? But one day, something happened to cause the earth to grow cold. Tiny crystals, glittering like diamonds, drifted down from the sky, covering the earth with a sparkling softness. 
the animals seeing snow for the first time were not afraid. But soon the snow deepened and Mouse disappeared. The tip of his tail was all the animals could see and they began to worry. Then Rabbit disappeared. The tips of his ears were all the animals could see and they worried more. At last they gathered together in a clearing deep inside the forest to talk about the weather. What was needed, they decided, was a messenger to travel at once to the great sky spirit and ask him to stop the snow. But who would be willing to leave Earth to visit a distant place where the sky spirit dwelled? Possum said, Owl is the wisest. Perhaps he should go. But no, the animals whispered. He might get lost in the light of day, so Owl should not go. Then Beaver said, Perhaps Raccoon should go. But no, the animals argued. He might follow his tail instead of his nose, so Raccoon should not go. Then Skunk said, Perhaps Coyote should go. But no, the animals shouted. Coyote is clever and loves to play tricks. He might chase the clouds or swallow the wind. So Coyote should not go. Scritcher, scritcher. Screecher, screecher, scratcher, yip, yap, yip, yip. <laughs> the noisy animals screeched and howled because they could not decide who should visit the great sky spirit to ask him to stop the snow. So the snow grew deeper and deeper and deeper, and the small animals climbed on top of the tall animals so they would not disappear. Wow. Look at all the birds on the antlers. Suddenly, down from the top of the tallest tree flew Rainbow Crow, the most beautiful bird on earth, who called out to all of the animals below in the sweetest voice of all birds. And he sang, I will go, I will stop the snow. And the animals, happy at last to have Crow as their messenger, chanted a song of praise. Aya, 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 rain, rainbow crow, stop the snow crow, fly to the sky high, rain, rainbow crow. Aya, 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 aya. He is a beautiful bird. Then high up into the sky flew Rainbow Crow, far above the snow and the winds of the earth, way beyond the moon, the stars and the clouds. For three days Crow flew until he came upon the great sky spirit who was too busy to notice. So Rainbow Crow began to sing. Oh great spirit in the sky, you rule the earth from way up high. You make the creatures large and small. You are the ruler of the soul. 
You make the trees and flowers grow. You cause the winds and clouds to blow. You make the rain, you make the snow. You make the cold on earth below. Oh, great spirit in the sky, for you I sing this lullaby. The great spirit stopped to listen. Never before had he heard such a sweet voice sing such a beautiful song. And he told Crow to choose a gift. Now Crow knew that far below the earth, the snow was getting so deep that soon all the animals would disappear. So he asked the great spirit to stop the snow. The great spirit replied, no crow, I cannot stop the snow, for snow has a spirit of its own. When snow spirit leaves the clouds to visit with his friend wind spirit, the snow will stop, but earth will still be cold. So crow asked the great spirit to stop the cold. The great spirit replied, no, Crow, I cannot stop the cold. All I can do is give you the gift of fire. Fire will keep you warm. It will melt the snow so that your friends will be content until warm weather returns. The great spirit picked up a stick, put a bit of fire on the end of it and handed it to Crow. I will give you this gift but once. Hurry, fly back to earth before the fire disappears. Off flew Crow. On the first day as Crow flew down, showering sparks of fire darkened his tail feathers. On the second day as Crow flew down, the fire burned brighter and the stick grew shorter and all of Crow's feathers were covered with soot. On the third day, as Crow flew down, the fire was so hot and the stick was so short that smoke and ash blew into Crow's mouth, and his voice became crackled and hoarse. Call, call. And when at last Crow returned to the clearing in the forest, all the animals had disappeared. Only the tops of the tallest trees could be seen, their branches sprouting through the deep snow. So Crow flew down, close to the pale, pale ground, around and around until the fire melted the snow and his friends were safe. And this tiny stick of fire became the grandfather of all fires. And for this, all the animals on earth thanked Crow. They danced and chanted a song of praise. Aya, 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 kind young brave Crow saved us from the snow, flew to the sky high brought back fire, now just plain crow, no more rainbow, aya, 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 aya.
At last, Crow, all alone, flew off to a distant tree where he wept. He was no longer beautiful. He could no longer sing a sweet song. His rainbow feathers were gone forever. When Snow Spirit emptied the clouds and joined Wind Spirit, the snow stopped. But Crow still wept. The great sky spirit heard Crow and came down from the sky. And when he saw Crow, he said, soon the two-legged will appear on earth. He will take the fire and be master of all but you. For being so brave and unselfish, I will give you the gift of freedom. The two-legged will never hunt you for your meat tastes like fire and smoke. The two-legged will never capture you, for your voice is now crackly and hoarse. The two-legged will never want your feathers because your rainbow colors are now black, but your black feathers will shine and they'll reflect all the colors on earth. If you look closely, you will see. Then Crow looked and saw hundreds of tiny rainbows shining in his black feathers. And he was content. The great spirit returned to his home in the distant sky and Crow happily returned to his friends in the forest, proud that he was now Black Crow with shining feathers full of tiny rainbows. The end. What an amazing and beautiful story. Now, let me read what I wanted to read at the beginning of the book. Author's note. Several years ago, at a corn plantation ceremony near my home in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, which is not far from where I am, I was captivated listening to a Lenape elder, Bill Whippoor Will Thompson, beneath the trees to a gathering of young and old. He told the stories of his people, including the legend of Rainbow Crow. Crow, also known as Raven, had always intrigued me. First, its size, large and powerful. Second, its temperament, haughty, sly, and mischievous. Third, its intelligence, fierce and daring. And finally, its wonderful sense of humor. When I heard this legend, I was surprised to discover yet another characteristic, its bravery. And I was eager to write the tale down. Several legends from different tribes depict Crow as fire beaver. But as, I, as far as I know, the Lenape is the only one that describes Crow as a bird with rainbow colored feathers. An exotic, brilliantly plumed bird, a, par a parakeet, a parakeet, sorry, at one time did thrive in eastern Pennsylvania, the Lenape's homeland. Interestingly, maize was a favorite food of both birds. Perhaps the presence of the multicolored parakeet, I think that's parakeet, in the land of the Lenape inspired the original teller 
to choose a rainbow colored crow. Today, Bill Thompson is Rainbow Crow's official teller. It was, it has been handed down in his family from father to son for countless generations. I am indebted to Bill for giving me permission to adapt it for publication. And I hope that through my retelling, a wide new audience will come to know this beautiful Lenape legend. Oh man, isn't this a great story? Rainbow Crow, a legend told by real people from a real Native American tribe, the Lenape people in their homeland where their tribe was originally living in Pennsylvania, okay, where I live. This was a great story. My teacher friends want to teach about Native American legends. This is a really, really good one, Rainbow Crow. Oh man, I love this book. This would be a good book for anybody's library. Rainbow Crow, retold by Nancy Van Len. Very good story. Oh, those were some good picks today. I'm so glad I got those. So glad. Now, my friends, we have to continue walking with Miss Millie because we are almost done, almost finished. Okay. Take the dust jacket off. Get to the chapter that we're on, friends. All right, so we are on chapter 26. Now, in our last chapter, Miss Millie was talking to Miss um, Millie about everything that had happened at her grandmother's house. So remember what happened. Um, let me see where I want to start. Alice's grandmother had, you know, she's having problems remembering things. Like she has Alzheimer's or dementia and she was having a lot of good days. And then um, as she was coming back from the library, um, oh no, that's not what happened. So the storm that came, first there was, um, um, her grandmother looking in the mirror and not recognizing herself and thinking that it was some strange woman in the house. So she broke the glass of the mirror thinking that that would make the strange woman go away, not realizing it was really her own reflection. So she cut her hand pretty bad. Alice's mom is Joni had to take the grandmother to the doctor, but then as they were out in the yard, as Eddie and um, Eddie and Alice were out in the yard, a storm started coming. This was the first storm that they had ever experienced in Rainbow, Georgia. So they didn't realize how a storm could just come really fast, be windy, the sky get dark, a lot of rainfall. They were really afraid, really afraid. So they go out into the yard. Something gets in Eddie's eyes. He's closing his eyes, but he's really freaked out because he can't hear. So how he sees the world is through his eyes. How he learns how to communicate is through his eyes. So without his eyes, he is terrified. So because the ground has been so dry, because it's been super hot, in Rainbow, as we have heard in the story, um, all of the dust and leaves are kicking up in the wind. 
and Alice cannot find Eddie. And so at that moment, she had just had enough of everything. She's in Rainbow. She doesn't want to be there. She wants her dad to come back. He needs to find himself. She's upset about that. She buried the letters. Now the grandmother is getting worse and she's just standing in the middle of the yard screaming at the sky like I'm just sick of it all. Then finally, once it calms a little bit, Miss Millie is like, so you going to come over here to my house where Eddie is? Because Eddie ran over here. So they went through talking about it, talking about what happened, talking about all the things that have been making Alice upset. And what does Miss Millie tell Alice? You know what? It's okay to get mad sometimes. But after you've gotten mad, you got to think about it and be smart. What are you going to do with all that anger? You got to decide to enjoy and be happy for the things you have and not give all of your attention to the things that you don't. So that is where we are now in our place of walking with Miss Millie. Chapter 26. Happy birthday, dear Alice. Happy birthday to you. As the singing and the signing of the birthday song ended, I took a breath before blowing out the 11 candles. Make a good wish, Pam yelled. It's funny. I knew exactly what I would have wished for a month ago. But like I feared, Daddy didn't remember it was my birthday with a card or a call or anything. I figured I'd used up enough of my wishes on him. I shut my eyes and blew. <sighs> Yay! Everyone clapped. What'd you wish for? Pam asked. No, nah, don't tell me. It won't come true. Mama pulled the cake back to cut it and serve it to my guests. Pam, Eddie, Miss Millie, Clarence, Miss Davis, and even Mr. O'Brien, who I told Mama could come. Grandma was here too. She hadn't needed stitches, but her hand was still bandaged from her accident. She seemed perfectly happy to be sitting between Miss Millie and Miss Davis, like she was enjoying her party, just like she was enjoying my party just fine. First piece goes to the birthday girl, Mama announced, bringing me a, the corner piece of the chocolate cake. Thanks, Mama. She smiled at me and nodded to Clarence. Looks like someone is enjoying one of your presents. One thing I asked for for my birthday was a new dog toy. When I first told Mama that, she thought I meant I wanted a stuffed dog. But I explained I wanted a chew toy for Clarence. After I opened it, I gave him a toy shoe that squeaked. Clarence got real close to it and sniffed it. Then he looked up at me like he was insulted. He might have even rolled his eyes, but after I threw it and it squeaked and chased, after I threw it and squeaked it and chased it myself a few times, he figured it out and started wagging his tail like he was enjoying it. When everyone finished their cake, I walked into the living room where the grown-ups had gone to sit. I came in on the end of Mama and Miss Millie's conversation, but don't tell her what I said or her head will swell so big, she won't never be able to leave the house through the door again. Miss Millie laughed and coughed a bit. Mama laughed too. Well, thank you for those kind words. And I agree, my daughter is a great young lady, but I have you to, I have, to thank you, Miss Millie. Your friendship has meant so much to her, to us. I knew Miss Millie didn't like to get all mushy 
and she really didn't like getting compliments. So I waited to see what she'd say. She shrugged her shoulders until they looked like they were stuck around her ears as she looked right at me and winked. Who said nothing? Who said nothing good never comes from eavesdropping? Everybody laughed and soon Miss Millie was coughing. Want a drink of water? Mr. O'Brien asked as he stood up and walked to the kitchen. Miss Millie shook her head, but Mama nodded to him that it was a good idea. They didn't understand Miss Millie's coughing fits like I did. I followed Mr. O'Brien into the kitchen. I didn't mind him being around so much anymore, especially after he'd asked Mama to teach him some sign language. But I had to laugh when he tried to sign to tell Eddie something was funny and it looked more like he was he had something stuck in his nose. Still, it was nice he was trying. Before he brought the drink to Miss Millie, who wasn't coughing anymore, I had something I needed to say. I cleared my throat. <clears throat> um, thank you for the bike, Mr. O'Brien. It's really nice and I like riding it around town. You are very welcome, Alice Ann. I mean, Alice, he smiled at me. I'm glad you could get some use out of it. Are you having a good birthday? I looked around my house and saw all the people and of course Clarence there. I had to admit I was having a pretty good birthday after all. And I smiled. It was good to be 11. I already knew so much more than when I was just 10. Lots of living and growing must make a person smarter. I looked at Miss Millie and figured she'd be living and growing. She'd been living and growing for 92 years. I guessed it was no wonder she was so smart. Chapter 27. On my next walk with Miss Millie, who was waiting for us on the corner, straddling his, who was, on my next walk with Miss Millie, who was waiting for us on the corner, straddling his beat up bike, but Jake McHale. Miss Millie nodded to him. Mr. Jake? Jake looked over his shoulder like he was afraid a mountain lion might jump out at any minute. Hi, hi Miss Miller. Um, Alice? I nodded to him. Hi, Jake. He continued his yammering, looking mostly at Miss Millie. I, 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 I'm sorry, my brother, my, my dad, what, what they say ain't what I want to say. Miss Millie moved closer to him. I wondered if she was seeing his freckles, his sad eyes, his scratches, or maybe she was just seeing Jake. It takes a strong plant to come up from the hardened ground, especially when it ain't given much sunshine. Jake looked right back into her eyes and smiled a smile that said he knew she wasn't really talking about growing plants. They were having themselves a moment. Then Miss Millie brought me into their moment Ain't that right, Alice girl? I was okay with their moment going on and I was old enough to understand what Miss Millie was telling Jake. But I was staying quiet, still wondering what kind of heart and ground their home was built on when Miss Millie repeated, ain't that right, Alice girl? And then she started coughing. I'd grown used to those coughing fits. Didn't like one bit how frequent, frequent they were, but I knew to wait it out. Poor Jake didn't know that. He hiked, hopped off his bike, 
like he was going to have to catch Miss Millie if she fell. Can I get you something? She shook her head as she turned to me. Is she okay? She'll be okay. She's used to it. We just need to give her a minute. Miss Millie cleared her throat as the coughing let up. Jake smiled, a scared kind of smile. I noticed all his smiles were kind of scared. Where's Pam this morning, I asked him. Jake grinned bigger at his sister's name. She checked out another sign language book and is studying that thing all the time now. Taught me a couple of things too. When he said that, he shrugged and looked away like he was embarrassed. Clarence started whining at the delay in the walk. Jake nodded to him. Good to see him walking normal again. Clarence, right? Miss Millie nodded. Wouldn't have happened without your caring for him, Jake. That was enough to make him turn completely red as he hopped back on his bike and waved. I'd better get home. See you later. And then, just to seal the deal, he yelled back, Bye, Alice. Bye, Jake. Miss Millie and me both said at the same time. I looked at her and she was grinning like she knew something I didn't. He's a good egg, Alice girl. Him and Pam. And maybe, maybe someday even the older angry one. They just need some friends too. Everybody does. Of course, I was okay with being friends with Pam. And Jake too, but now Miss Millie was even suggesting I could be friends one day with the Mikhail I knew as mean as his daddy. The same one I knew was a rotten egg. Maybe all that coughing had finally gone to her head. Alice girl, Miss Millie began as if I spoke my last thought out loud. Sometimes we have to take the high road especially with children who only be imitating what they've been taught. Before I could figure out what to say back to her, we reached a street where we usually turn left instead of right. Today, she wanted to go down the other street. Now, even though I'd been in Rainbow almost three months and had gone to church, the school, the park, the library, and of course on lots of walks with Miss Millie. I had to say I hadn't been up and down all the roads in town and the one and that one was new to me. Miss Millie stopped in front of a pretty house with a big front porch and a sign that read Joe Watkins MD. I needed, I need to go in here. I need to go in here. I'll only be a minute. How about you and Clarence wait on the porch? This was strange, but the porch was nice. It was in the shade and there were pretty yellow flowers with dark middles that I saw on a lot of porches here. Black eyed Susans. I remembered grandma once told me their names. Clarence and I were just sitting on the porch, sitting on the porch swing when a girl about my age came out. She had pigtails and a real nice smile that looked familiar. She just stood there like I was supposed to know who she was. Hi, I said, realizing it sounded like the question it was. Hi, the pigtailed girl said. She looked almost as awkward as I was feeling. I'm Charlene. I'm Alice. I know. You know? Do you go to my church? No, she smiled, but the awkwardness was kind of going away with her smile. No, my daddy's a doctor and Miss Millie told me about you last week when she was here. Then I remembered the car that stopped 
with the girl in it waving to Eddie and me. And that's why the pigtailed girl who smiled at me at the library looked familiar. I started to nod. Miss Millie said you were you're 11 too, Charlene said. Yep, just had a birthday last week. My birthday was last month. We talked about the library and school and birthdays for a few more minutes before Miss Millie came back grinning like she had a secret. Ooh, grinning like she had a secret. Let us stop there. See, I, let, let me tell you. Oh, hello, Jocelyn. I'm so glad you're here. Hello. All right, so I gotta stop there. See, this is what happens. I get sucked into the story and I gotta keep looking at my timer because I'm about to go over time, okay? This is getting good. So now, Miss Millie has a secret. What is the secret? We get all the way to the end to find out there's a secret? Okay. Well, we are going to have to wait until our fabulous Friday, which will most likely be the end of Walking with Miss Millie. OK, so now Miss Millie is suggesting that maybe just maybe Alice can learn to be the older Mikhail's friend because he is not a very nice person like his dad. And Alice is starting to kind of let Mr. O'Brien in and he must really like her mom because now he's trying to learn sign language. OK. He wants to be able to communicate with Eddie. This is very nice. So we have to wait until Fabulous Friday to find out what the secret is, to find just to find out all the stuff that's going to happen at the end. We got two and a half more chapters. I have a feeling a lot is going to happen in those two and a half chapters. OK, well. This really great book, The Rainbow Crow, a Lenape Indian legend. Wonderful book. Beautiful pictures. You should put this in your library, okay? And our Thanksgiving story, which was pretty funny, pretty sneaky, plump and perky turkey. This is a really good story. All of my parent friends, parent teacher friends, teacher friends. If you want to read this story, you want to read a story before Thanksgiving that the kids will like, plump and perky turkey. Okay. Well, my friends, as always, the time goes like that. We are already at the end of Miss Hope's reading hour. It has been so great to be here with you. I missed you all on Monday. Thank you all for your concern. And I'm happy again to report that everyone's okay. It was just a little minor medical emergency in my family, but everyone is fine. And I thank you so much for your concern. Now, I will see you again on our fabulous Friday with two more great books and the end of Walking with Miss Millie. Until then, my friends, have a great rest of your wonderful Wednesday. I will see you right back here on Fabulous Friday on Miss Hope's Reading Hour. Until then, my friends. <laughs>